What's up everyone welcome back to another interesting video on my youtube channel and today I'll be reviewing one of the most stable rooms out for Poco X4 Pro the Dogfest OS. So I'll be reviewing its latest update and I'll be talking about everything starting from the software to its cons. So make sure to watch the video till the end and before we get started let me remind you again that only 10% of the people watching my videos are actually subscribed to my channel so make a sub if you like my content. Now let's get the video started. Talking about the software, so firstly this room comes on Android 13 and for the security patch it's based on the latest security patch of 5th September 2023 and by the way you get the stock kernel by default. Now for the launchers you get the derp launcher which is based on the Trebuchet launcher from Lineage OS and this launcher comes with a lot of features. So firstly moving into the wallpapers and style section, when you move into the wallpapers tab, you get a lot of pre-included Dorfest OS wallpapers and now moving back, you can also get different color patterns with respect to the colors of the wallpaper. Moving down, you also get features like themed icons and you can also change the app grid size from here, so yeah, that's great. Moving into the home settings, so firstly you can change the icon pack according to your choice and even you get features like forced themed icons which generate themed icons for those apps which don't have one. Moving down, you can also customize the app drawer opacity, icon size, font size and much more. So yeah, that's all for the launcher. Now talking about the pre-installed apps, so as this is a Google Apps build, so you get the Google Play Store and some other Google Apps pre-installed and for the dialer, so you get the Google dialer which makes an announcement if you try to record a call. <laughs> now for the camera, so you get two camera apps pre-installed, firstly you get this generic camera app which is just a trash. But apart from this, you also get the MIUI cam pre-installed by which you can take videos up to 1080p 30fps, so yeah, that's nice. And by the way, no Dolby. I flashed the Dolby Atmos Magisk module, that's why it's here. So keep that in mind. Now if I talk about the customization, so yup, you get a lot. So when you move into the settings, you get an option called the derp space. So when you open it, so firstly you get customizations for your status bar. So when you open the battery settings, you can customize your battery bar like right now I have set it on the iOS 15 landscape style. So now if I select the iOS 16 style, it changes again. So you get a lot of battery options and even you can set whether you want to keep it hidden or visible. Now moving back, you get some features for your clock. But the thing which I like the most is the background chip. Like you can customize your clock background like right now. I've set it on sharp gradient stroke if you look at my status bar. And now if I select the solid accent gradient design, it gets changed. So yeah, that's nice. Now moving into the miscellaneous settings, firstly you get the status bar lyric feature which displays the lyrics of the song which is played. So I made a video about it long time ago so make sure to check it out, link in the description. Now moving into the logo tab, you can set different logos into your status bar like right now I've set it on the ROG logo and now if I select the windows logo, it displays into our status bar just like this. So now moving into the quick settings panel tab. You get some notification features and moving back into the quick settings tab, you get a lot of features regarding the QS panel. Like you can change the background transparency from here and moving down, you also get different QS header image presets which you can apply into your QS panel like this and as you can see that you get 33 different QS header images so yeah, that's great. Now moving down, you can also hide the labels from your QS panel like this and even you can customize the number of columns of your QS panel so that's nice. Moving down, you can also set your footer text of your QS panel and in fact, you also get different animation styles for your QS panel so yeah, I like them. Talking about the lock screen features, so firstly when you move into the lock screen UI tab, you get a lot of lock screen clock styles which is really amazing and moving back you also get some features for your lock screen shortcuts and always on display now moving into the system features you can set the android p animation style for your system but now if i move into the customizations tab here comes the main twist so moving into the customizations tab as you can see you get a lot of customizations so firstly moving into the ui style tab 
you get a lot of UI styles like right now I've set it on the pitch black theme for pure black system background during the dark mode. But apart from this, I also like the Shishu Knight style, so when I apply it, as you can see the UI style gets changed which looks really cool by the way. And apart from this, you also get some other UI styles, so yeah, that's nice. Moving into the advanced monad settings, you can change the theming styles of your system according to your choice like if I select the fruit salad pattern, the color pattern of the system gets changed. Now, you also get different font styles in the body font tab, so yep, that's great. And moving back, you also get different brightness bar styles, like right now I've set it on the default one which looks absolutely boring. But if I select the cyberpunk style, it gets changed which looks really great and now if I select the outline pattern, it gets changed again and yeah, that looks fine. Moving into the navbar styles tab, you get a lot of navbar styles and you also get the exclusive dub fest OS style navbar which looks killer amazing. Moving back, you also get different types of icon packs and personally, I like the gradient icon pack and apart from this, you also get Wi-Fi and mobile data icon style so yeah, that's great. Moving down, you also get some data icon packs and apart from this, you can also customize the app icon shape. Now when we move into the pulse tab, you also get customizations regarding the music pulse for the ambient display, lock screen and even the nav bar. And if you don't know that what's a music pulse, so when you play a music, this type of lines get displayed on your AOD lock screen and your nav bar, which looks great by the way. So yeah, that's all for the Dove Space customizations, but there are more features. Moving into the apps tab, you get features like game dashboard by which you can increase the gaming performance of your games and display the FPS of your games. Moving back, you also get features like parallel space by which you can clone your app and it's a really helpful feature. So yeah, that's all for the customizations and now let's talk about the performance. Talking about the performance, so when I ran n 2 I got a score of about 462k and for the CPU throttle test, no CPU throttling was detected and as a result, I got a max chip score of about 231k on 100 threads. So yeah, that's great. Talking about the gaming, so it's outstanding again. So for the gaming test, I played BGMI and let me tell you that you don't get any FPS proof pre-included. That's why I had to flash the FPS unlocker module from Magisk and during the gaming session, I got an approximate of about 58 to 59 FPS during the TDM matches and for the classic match, the results were almost the same with minor frame drops. By the way, I had posted the gaming test video on my gaming test telegram channel. So if you want to watch it, just join the telegram channel. And finally, if I talk about the gaming performance conclusion, so yeah, that's great. Now talking about 5G, so it works fine without any problem. As you can see, the speeds are also fine. Now talking about the battery backup, so I got a battery backup of about 8 hours on heavy usage which is insane and of course I used my phone on 120Hz and for normal usage you can consider 9 plus hours. So the shout out for this room goes to Semina Alexandru, love you bro, you just nailed it. Now finally here lies my conclusion, so if you are looking for an all rounder room with a lot of customizations, good gaming performance and amazing battery life then you should definitely consider this room. The flashing procedure is same like the other AOSP based rooms, just flash using AOSP recovery and if you don't know the flashing procedure, I've already made a video on it, link in the description and I'll also be giving the room link in the description so make sure to check out all the files. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it, share it with your friends and most importantly, make a sub for more interesting videos like this. So sayonara and take care.